Technology is male driven. Well, not really. When people think about the most iconic software developers, they see Linus Torvalds, Alan Turing, Bill Gates, Larry Page. But wait, who's that? Could it be that women have been pioneering our computational life from the very beginning? Who wrote the world's first program? Who invented programming languages as we use them today? Who were the pioneers of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and the Internet? And what has all of this to do with Nazi Germany? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Ihan. I'm a freelance software engineer in Germany and I share the incredible stories of our tech world with you in the most entertaining way possible. And today's episode is about an incredible story how women are shaping the male-dominated tech industry in the present and the past. Let's start with Act 1. So let's go back in time, to the mid of the 19th century. Edgar Allan Poe is on the peak of his poetic inspiration. Karl Marx develops his theories on society which will later be known as Marxism. James Maxwell lays the foundational work for future scientific advancements. In a time of poets, social studies and mechanical engineering, a young woman was keen to translate an article about Babbage's analytical engine into the English language, the Countess Ada Lovelace. While translating the article, Ada investigated on its theories and added her own notes, turning the original paper into a three times longer work of herself. These notes, published in 1843, contained what many consider as the world's first algorithm and computer program, long before the advent of modern computing. Note G. In this note, she explained her vision for the practical use of the analytical engine and described in detail on how to use it to compute a sequence of Bernoulli numbers. Note G was the first actual program written in history. With her remarkable achievement and her understanding of the machine's capabilities, she laid the groundwork for the concept of programming itself. Her foresight into the potential applications of computing machines reached much higher than any scientist of that time. The common belief was that such computing Computing approaches were merely applicable for numeric calculations. Ada, however, envisioned the extension to any form of information. May it be to compose music, create graphics or general purpose use for science. Basically everything we use computers today for. And that was over 100 years before Alan Turing would make this reality. Noteworthy to say that being a woman in England, she was not allowed to access any scientific library and even overcame these extreme difficulties and excelled at it. So being a woman at that time was of course not beneficial and her contributions weren't recognized during her lifetime that ended at the age of only 36 caused by cancer. In the Victorian time there was the belief that women could not give birth to children and use their intellect at the same time. They even claimed to have found that Ada was suffering from a health condition that made her warmth jump around inside of her body to explain why it was possible for her to give birth to three children and use her intellect. The US Department of Defense even named the first programming language to utilize high-level language after her and gave it the name Ada and acknowledged her as the pioneer of computing. At least Babbage was ahead of his time and referred to Ada as the enchantress of numbers. So we already talked about Ada's inventions to be ignored for 100 years. What happens next? Well. A hundred years later, Alan Turing, the father of artificial intelligence, referred to Lovelace's groundwork and created the mechanical computer that cracked the code once for all. At around the same time, on the other side of the ocean, a brave woman would break the barriers of technology once again. Totally ridiculous idea and you couldn't do that, except it worked. Grace Marie Hopper was a curious child. 
who at the age of seven decided to figure out how alarm clocks work and dismantled all of them in their household to get to know more about the mechanics of their daily electronics. She studied math in Yale University after which she attended to the WAVES program. The woman accepted for volunteer emergency service which was brought to life in World War II in 1940. Hundreds of women were hired at that time by the military to solve complex calculations that would improve the accuracy of weapons on the battlefields against the Nazis. Grace would later become Navy Rear Admiral and was the first programmer of Harvard's Mark I computer. But Grace was not your ordinary mathematician who would gatekeep the art of programming from non-mathematicians. She already noticed at that time that it would be way more convenient if people could learn how to operate computers without studying maths before. After all, insisting on talking to computers in plain English was a totally ridiculous idea and you couldn't do that. You know what bug stands for, right? A bug describes a malfunctioning code that causes a misbehavior that was not intended when writing the program. Grace Hopper was the person to introduce the concept of debugging as she and her team discovered that such a malfunction could be attributed to an actual moth stuck in the relay of the Beaten computer. Beaten to death by the relay contacts was a moth about this big. So the operator got a pair of tweezers and very carefully fished the moth out of the relay, put it in the logbook, put scotch tape over it, and below it he wrote, first actual bug found. But her impact didn't end there. Grace Hopper was one key component for the Manhattan Project and led the calculations that would enable to calculate how a ball could implode into itself. Little did she know that this was used later to build the first nuclear bomb, which was then dropped on Japan and ended the war six days later. After the war, Grace was not allowed to become a professor at Harvard because they wouldn't have female professors. And she could not continue at the Navy because they rolled back the WAVES program. So she was pushed into the private sector, to be precise onto the position of head of engineering and the software division at Eckhart Markley, the computer corporation. The mission was to commercialize computers. The year is 1951. Grace popularized the idea of machine independent programming languages and will become the grandmother of COBOL, a programming language that is still used today in lots of programs and mission critical software. Short time later, she invented the world's first compiler, the means to enable programmers to use the natural English language instead of undecipherable zeros and ones. Every subsequent programming language relies on the concept that Grace gave us. Talking to computers in plain English was a totally ridiculous idea and you couldn't do that. Except it worked. Let's go back once more to the 40s. The 1940s was marked with astonishing leaps in the field of technology. Alongside Grace Hopper, there were further exceptional women in tech. The most intriguing one may be Hedy Lamarr. Hedy Lamarr, born as Hedwig Eva Maria Kiesler in Vienna, Austria, was an exceptional young woman. She would soon become a famous actress in her country and later marry Fritz Mandel, Austria's third richest man and weapon manufacturing owner. After an abusive marriage and the fascism she couldn't live with, Hedy escaped from the hands of Mandel and arrived in London in 1937. She got her new name Hedy Lamar after signing a contract with Goldwyn Studios. She moved to the United States and shined as a Hollywood star alongside Clark Gabe, Spencer Tracy, James Stewart and many more. And she became an Hollywood icon, a sex idol and was even named and commonly known as the most beautiful woman in the world. Hedy's face was the blueprint for Disney's Snow White and Catwoman. And oh, she was secretly a talented and genius mathematician and inventor of technology. What most people don't know is that she contributed to the world's most influential technology while playing the sassy puppet of Hollywood. The legendary inventor Howard Hughes stated that the design of his aircrafts was actually based on Hedy's recommendation to align the aircraft design on shapes that can be found in the nature. She also took the chance to fight the Nazis during World War II when she got to know about the newest technology in warfare, radio controlled torpedoes. The weak point of torpedoes are even that. 
that they are radio controlled. The radio signals from the controller could be easily disturbed by the opponents and the Nazis were famously known for their hacking skills and their tapping. Hedy and her acquaintance George Anteil, a world famous composer, invented the spread spectrum technology and the most important of them all, the frequency hopping communication system inspired by the functionality of pianos. This approach made it possible to split the frequency into multiple channels and jump back and forth between them in a random order. And only the sender and the receiver would know which channel to be used next. And therefore no one else could know which channel to disturb for getting into the way of the radio controlled torpedo and its controller. Lamar and Antal registered a patent for this with the name Secret Communication System in 1941. Of course everyone ignored it. This technology doesn't only form the foundation but it is the technology that's today in our Bluetooth and GPS and Wi-Fi signals. These technology leaps would never be possible without this invention. There we have it again history repeats itself. It was not until 1997 that Hedy Lamar got the recognition she deserved from the Electric Frontier Foundation. And that was only three years before she passed in the age of 85. After her death in 2014, Hedy was introduced to the National Inventors Hall of Fame for her contributions in the wireless communication systems. It gets clear more than ever. Cultures framed the gender roles pretty clearly. Men are the inventors, the geniuses and intellectuals, while women are the beautiful and emotional intelligent entities of the society. Also when looking at factors of success, the major differences based solely on gender are more than clear. There are lots of scientific papers that prove that attractive looks are beneficial for being perceived as competent and professional. This applies to men. When an attractive woman is active in the intellectual arts, it sadly often ends up like this. I was about to make a presentation at a tech conference when a male attendee gave me this unsolicited piece of advice. Don't be nervous, you're hot. No one expects you to do well. At the end of the war, women worked at the army's top secret projects, the Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer, or ENIAC the commonly acknowledged world's first computing device. Even then, the women didn't get any recognition for this. 